It is week number three, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, it's time to talk about the art of prehistory. Now, if you remember last week, we talked about the culture and how everything was new. And it was experimental in that sense of there was nothing before. Because this is literally before written history. It was the first stuff that happened. So the art of prehistory is pretty basic, too, in the sense that it's new. It's simple. It's there. And let's get started. So art isn't just what we see. It's not um, a drawing or a painting. There's so much more to it. And so the communications, gestures, sounds, and the art. So art was communication to the people, to the um, civilians there, and to us today, even though we're so far beyond prehistory. Where What was their canvas? Their canvas was the cave walls, which makes a lot of sense because if we talk about prehistory architecture, it was caves. It was simple lean-tos. It was those caves that they could find a hole, live there, safe out of the elements. It was the basic good ones. And like, what was the art? It was the animals, hunting scenes, human hands. You can just see the hands there, handprints. It's probably... Like what they are, well, who knows? We got all those theories. I probably think about signature saying, hey, I was here. The hunting scenes, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? For the sole fact that that was probably the main thing. It was their livelihood, hunting, gathering, trying to survive. So that's what they knew. That's what they talked about. That is more than likely the biggest part of their day was getting that kill, getting that animal, getting that food so they could survive for the next day, week, so on and so forth. The caves, you got the one in Spain, one in France. You can see the names there that are the most famous. They're the ones that probably when we look at cave paintings, we go, ooh, let's check those out. They're the ones where you look at and go, now there is some prehistory art. Sculptures do arrive, which makes sense. Let's think about it. You've got stone tools, and then you start getting into some of those early other tools, and you've got a stick. You've got um, a piece of clay, and you just can start whittling. It's that fidget tool. Everyone's fidgeting today, so they've been fidgeting forever. So all of a sudden, they start fidgeting out of stones, bones, and clay. you got those sticks as well, but obviously, they've probably disappeared by now. And we start seeing sculptures like you see down here. And because after a while, you're like, oh, I'm kind of good at this. So let's see if I can do this or do that. And they were simple. But it was animals. It was humans. It's what they saw. It was the things around them that they experienced, the newness, the new culture, the new ideas that they were just growing. Probably. When we say probably, it's that thought process behind things. <laughs> Probably deals with religious rites because – I'll move me out of the way so you can see that picture. Um, religious rites probably because religion has always played a major role in history. Um, throughout human history, religion has been there in one way, shape, or form. So that's a big guess for a lot of historians is there's some religious connection to a lot of these sculptures, lots of these paintings. That could possibly have been. So if you can see the art, it's right there. Remember, while the time period is very vast, we have the Stone Age. They use minerals, um, bone meal, charcoal, mixed with water, blood, animal fats, tree sap. So they're using what they have. They're not creating new paints or they're not creating these elaborate uh, art pieces they're using what's around them and putting them together in the stone age that's when they really etched animals signs humans they carved little figures out of what they had around it was not making these other things and when we say stones it was probably the softer smaller stones and not the granite not the marble that we see later on tools farming home construction pottery sewing weaving is all part of their culture and that art that we saw because they're now making different style clothing, which can be an art form. 
looking at the home construction architecture, moving out of those caves a little bit, starting to build lean to starting to build mobile tents. We're starting to see that change with the bronze age, the invention of the pottery wheel. Ooh, now we have pottery around pottery allowed the bowls, the cups, the plates, they are now allowing to stay longer. And that's where a lot of prehistory artifacts are, is those things that pottery was made. Ted style clothing, mostly of wool items, which makes sense. That's what they had, those fur, um, the wool that they could create from it. Skirts, kilts, tunics, cloaks, simple, basic forms to keep them warm, to keep uh, them out of the elements. Home dwellings, like we said, we can see the home construction moving into roundhouses, maybe a stone wall, thatched roof, fireplace, hearth. At this point, it's starting to become more and more homes because more villages and cities begin to form. Egypt, Mesopotamia is rising up, like we said. So as we can see, the art match the culture, and as it becomes more complex, so does the art form, so do the ideas behind that. And then Iron Age, which, like I said, you can debate it if it's in prehistory or not, but it works all into that area. Architecture, art, religion become more sophisticated once again. Writing systems and written documents, including alphabets, are being seen. So when we look at this week's art, the prehistory art that I've kind of focused on is that cave art, those sculpt, those little carvings. It is extremely fascinating. It is extremely, I guess for today, simply done. Not that I'm discrediting what it is. It's just they had the materials and then they had the cave wall and they put it together. That's all they did. It wasn't these elaborate pieces that you'll see throughout our time together. It was more of that, here's what we do. Let's go. And that's what's awesome about it. So brief lesson this week, because the art and the culture, you can see how open-ended it is. We just don't know much about it because there's nothing written down. Prehistory is before written, so there's not much written down. Not much, or nothing written down, not much known. We have our good guesses, we have our good analysis, and we use them, but it's up to you. So for this, this week's discussion post, I want you to find a work of art from prehistory, something that you go, oh, I like that. That looks interesting. And then this work of art, you're going to tell us about it. What, Where is it? If we know who did it, the story behind it. I get that these are going to be vague, so don't panic of like, oh, I don't know all the details. Well, tell us what you do know about it. And then tell us how it shows prehistory culture. So taking what we talked about last week, combine it with what – we did this week and just show us well how does that art match the culture because that's what this humanities class is all about seeing the culture reflected in the day-to-day -day life of art architecture literature and since we didn't really have those other two the arts so have a fun get some good research pick those cave arts, those carvings, that work of art from prehistory that you found interesting. Write it, reply to two others, have fun. And as always, if you need me, feel free to ask.